Once upon a time, there was a girl born in November whose name was December because the notary public was a bit hungover. She was walking through the forest when she came across a book in the middle of the path that opened its cover and flew away. Wowzers, said December. So that book flying! She chased the flying book all over the place, but after a while got tired and laid down next to her dog, whose name was Pamphylian, who had just finished a meal of pebbles and twigs. I have an idea, said December. I'm going to look for Mr. Owl and ask him how to catch that book. So she went to visit her friend, the Owl. She found him sitting in his tree, looking at a magazine with naked ladies. Don't believe the narrator. It was not a magazine with naked ladies. It was a lingerie catalogue, for Victoria's Secret to be exact. It's not the same thing. All right, if we must split hairs. Then the owl was looking at a magazine with half-naked ladies when December arrived and blurted out, Hey, Mr. Owl, why are there books that fly in? Books do not fly, Mr. Owl answered. Books are in bookstores, in libraries, on people's bookshelves, and when the publisher hasn't sold them to anyone yet, sitting in a warehouse in Chico, California, waiting for you to click the link in the upper right-hand corner of this video and give them a hoe. There's one that does, said December, and then told him what had happened before with the flying book. Mr. Owl closed his catalogue with ladies in undergarments, after having bookmarked the page he was on, of course, and said, very well, we look into it. So December and Mr. Owl went toward where December had left her dog, Pamphylia, waiting. There it is, said December. Wait for me here. December was already dozing off when Mr. Owl came back and told her, Done. The mystery has been solved. It is, plain and simple, an extreme case of a handless book. Handless book, said December, and what's that? Well, it is a book that doesn't want to be on a bookshelf, or on a desk, or cast aside in a corner. It is a book that wants to be in somebody's hands. Someone who reads it, writes it, draws it. Someone who loves it, that is. Me, me, me said December. She slowly went toward the flying book, and when she thought she was close enough for it to see her but not get scared, reached out with both hands. So the book opened its cover, as if to fly off, but hesitated. December reached out further and said, Come here. Come here. Come here. So the book started to fly, but instead of going away, landed on December's hands. She was happy and hugged the book hard, so hard that the book farted. A satisfied Mr. Owl applauded, and Panphalia burped out the smell of the twigs and pebbles she'd eaten. So Mr. Owl went off to keep looking at ladies. I mean, to read and study a lot. December started to color the book with her colored pencils, and they did not live happily ever after, because in a moment of carelessness, Panphalia wolfed down the back cover, the index, the appendices, and seven endnotes. The end. The moral of the story is, do not leave anything where dogs can get them. They may be dinosaurs in disguise. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this lovely story from the Zapatista's Dignified Rage, Final Public Speeches of Subcommander Marcos. If you read the whole book, you'll find a few more zany stories like this one, and plenty of insightful critiques of capitalism, political parties, marginalization of difference, and much more. The first chapter gets a bit opaque and incomprehensible, but things smooth out after that. Plus, you can read the chapters in any order you like. For those less familiar with the Zapatistas, I would recommend starting with Part 4, Tasting Brown, or Sixth Wind, and Other Dignified Rage. Cheers!